Hey moms, Katie here with Mom Nation with another episode of Live and Learn. And this one really, really hits home for me, you guys. Um, uh, what our lovely lady Laura is going to be talking about today, I wish I had back, you know, almost six years ago now when I was first pregnant with my son. So I'm really excited for this. I'm excited to share her knowledge with you and um, hopefully teach you a couple of things while we're at it. Yeah, Laura? Yeah. Let's awesome, awesome. So tell us a little bit about you. Um, well, hi, ladies. Um, my name is Laura Fiala, and I am an evidence-based birth instructor. Um, I also am the owner of Birth with Knowledge. Um, I teach childbirth education classes, and my whole goal is to really give moms and their partners a voice um, in their birth. Love it. So when I first met you, I can even remember the taste of the lovely pie we were sharing. <laughs> and Beth, um, Beth Griffith with She Works here, when she mentioned that you worked with evidence-based birth, I was like, hold up. I ain't never heard of that before. So can you explain what that is for the ladies who might not know what that is? Yes, I can. So evidence-based birth is this wonderful organization, um, and it was started by a nurse with her PhD. Um, and she went in to have her baby and her whole goal in the process was to be a good patient. And after the whole um, rigmarole of having a baby, she was like, what the hell just happened? Um, you know, it's like she, was, she wasn't allowed to get out of bed. She wasn't allowed to eat. She wasn't allowed to drink. She was given a bedpan. Like it was all these crazy things. And so she started researching and writing articles um, to get that knowledge out there and it has taken off. Um, so her whole goal is to bring evidence-based maternity care to the people that are having babies. Um, because they're, you know, if we get this information into the hands of mamas, then that they're going to be making that change from the ground up. Um, and so it's great. So we now have a full length, um, childbirth class that we offer, um, and it's like nothing else that's out there. It's fantastic. So this is really around the mindset of birth, right? Yes. Because a lot it's of it, a mindset. Yeah, it is. It's a really big, it's, it's shifting our mindset. Even we look at so often that it's one in three women are going to have a cesarean. And that's all we focus on. We don't want to be the one in three. We don't want to be the one in three. But really, if you think about it, there are still two thirds of women that are not having a cesarean. So if we're focusing our mind all on the cesarean, all on the cesarean, that's all our brain is thinking about. Right. So we shift it and say, I want to be in the two and three. I want a vaginal birth. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be totally unmedicated or at home or wherever. You can be in a hospital and still have meds and still have a vaginal birth, but we're still putting that mindset that that's where baby's coming out of. And what do we need to do to get there? Um, because we can plan and we can, our brain can make those connections on how to do something, but it has a really hard time making those connections on how not to do something. Makes a lot of sense. So as females, this is gonna sound like a really silly question, but you'll see where I'm going with this. All right. We're, we're made for this childbirth stuff, right? We are. Tell me yeah. why we have so much trouble with it then. Well, a big part of why we have so much trouble with it is that we put women in these unconventional positions. And to us, they seem normal, mm -hmm. but laying on your back in bed is not the normal way to get a baby out. If you look at history, um, we should, mama should be up and moving and standing and we want to wiggle our babies down is basically how it comes out. And the more you move, the more your pelvis moves, the more it gives baby um, room to shift and shimmy and get into that best position for them. So it's going to make our births easier. It's going to make them less painful. It's going to make them faster. If we're given that ability to move um, and to shift positions into ways that we feel that are comfortable for us. So we've kind of just taught ourselves to not birth the way we naturally should. Yeah, the media we, has taught us how to not burn. There we go. There we go. Better way of putting it. Absolutely. Yeah. So what kinds of things? So so you said that there's there's a shift happening, and, and I feel it too, and I'm excited about it because it's about time for women. But what kind of things should we focus on versus not? Does that make sense? That question? Right. Okay. So we're not trying to we're not trying to pit women, we're not trying to be like OBs are bad and we, you know, we want everyone to be on a team because that's how you're going to get the best birth. That's how you're going to get 
the help and the support you need because our medical staff is there for a reason. Um, they can make birth safer. They can help with that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, it doesn't make any sense to have women not eat and drink for 24 hours. Like, yeah, I mean, that all stemmed from the way that anesthesia, anesthesia was done in the forties, right? Not in the forties <laughs> stuff has come a long way. And so we, we should be pressing to keep up with what current research is. Mm -hmm. And it's scary because there is a, there's this thing called the evidence practice gap, which means what it means is basically it takes 15 to 20 years to get evidence into practice in the hospital. So that's stuff now that we're looking at from the, that we knew in the early 2000s is just now making it to the hospital where it's like, oh yeah, women should eat and drink. I mean, we don't go run marathons without food. Like, well, right. And I think that from what you said, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that whole thing came about because just in case you needed to get rushed to the ER to get a C-section, right. like they needed your stomach to be clear. Exactly. Um, the worry is that you would aspirate. So which mean, that means that your stomach content comes right. out and then gets into your lungs. Mm -hmm. But now, even if you have to be put under general anesthesia, which a very small percentage of women need general anesthesia if a cesarean is needed, they still have ways to protect our airways that it shouldn't be an issue anyways. So even if there is food in your stomach, the, your risk of aspirating is so, so tiny that it's like the damage that it does to not eat is a way higher risk than, because we're putting women at risk by not letting them eat. I'd like, imagine so, or drink. Yeah, or drink. It's like, how do you sustain your energy to, to get up and move and push? And when you get to pushing, it's women are so like, oh my God, I can't do it anymore. And then we're put, now we're like, well, she's not progressing. Well, it's like, well, let her eat something, give her some energy. And then it, we, so, you know, we're, we're creating this vicious circle that doesn't necessarily need to be there. Totally makes sense. I mean, water for goodness sakes, our body is what percentage water and right. now we're restricting water when we need it the most. It's right. just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's a great example. So do you have any other big examples of some things that we traditionally do that isn't necessarily evidence-based? Um, well, another big one um, that we get a lot is this, this concept of big babies. Um, so women are told that, oh, you're going to have a big baby and they're not going to fit. And it's like, that's, that's terrifying. <laughs> like, it's terrifying. It is. It's terrifying and it's crazy. And so women are, um, told this at the end of pregnancy, they like, they'll get an ultrasound and they're like, oh, well, baby looks too big to fit. So let's just have, let's just plan your cesarean. And then we find out that baby is only like seven and a half pounds. So there's a couple of things that are really wrong with this is that one ultrasounds are off by up to 15% in either direction. Wow. Which is crazy. A huge, a huge difference. So, and especially when we're talking about things that are only weighing like eight pounds, like a, you know, a pound in either direction is, could be a huge shift. It's big. Yeah. Right. Plus big babies are not necessarily, a lot of them are all squished. So when they squish through the birth canal, it's not like it's not as crazy as it sounds. Our bodies are made to stretch and grow and have that room to let baby out. Um, so in, there are some circumstances where this isn't true, but for the most part, if your body grows a baby, it grows a baby big enough that is, you're going to be able to birth that baby. Right, right. So, and there also is this lovely stigma that if you're told that you're going to have a big baby, even if you're still going through labor and stuff, it gets, it puts this, um, cloud over you. Like, it's like, Ooh, that's the one that's going to have a big baby. And so they get worried. And a lot of times we jump to interventions more quickly than if we hadn't known at all, um, what baby, how big baby was. Let's talk about those clouds because I have a feeling that there's a lot more clouds than just that one. And now when we first started in, you know, at the beginning, we talked about mindset and how mindset is really, really important. So what other things are happening that mom might not have control over that might be kind of attacking her mindset? Oh, well, I feel like there's a lot of things. I mean, we get in this this headspace that we're trying to keep up with the Joneses or, you know, we're set to some expectation and really we just need to, 
you know, we just need to listen to our bodies. If that means that we need to roar like lions or yell or be loud, then we should do that and we should embrace it. And women are told so often, it's like, oh no, we need to be quiet. You know, no, we need to harness down and like bring out those, those instincts that are inside us, those animal instincts that yes. we're getting baby out. We need to listen to our bodies. You know, sometimes women birth in weird positions. Like they want to be squatting or on the floor. Or they want to be on all fours. And we're t- we tell them all the time. It's like, no, you need to be on your back with your feet up in stirrups. You know, uh-huh. we are just, we're, we're pushing down those, um, those instincts that mom has. And we should be listening to them instead of um, telling mom that she doesn't know what she's talking about or she doesn't know. What, she, what her body's doing. Oh, 100%. I think those mom instincts are running crazy wild during that time and then in the right. newborn phase too. And right. I think we should always listen to mom because yeah. mom, mom has that instinct, like you said, um, and, and, and shoving that down is, is just not beneficial to us, even on a scientific level. I mean, come on, right? right? And I think on a bigger level, when we do this to moms in labor, we're really doing it to them as mothers. Because we're telling them that they don't know how to take care of their baby. They don't know how to birth their babies. Then why would they know how to take care of their babies? So we have all these moms going home with all of these crazy high insecurities, these things like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm doing it right. My baby, my neighbor's baby sleeps all day and mine is not. And their mine wants to breastfeed every 20 minutes and this one wants to. And I'm like, it's all normal. But right. we're not putting those, we're not letting mom get those like trust in her body and in what she's doing. And so I feel like when we're taking birth away, we're really taking some of that motherhood away. Totally agree. And not to mention, I mean, I know that there's a reason for it, but not to mention all those videos they make you watch in the hospital before you leave. If, if Mm -hmm. the nurses didn't scare the shit out of you before that, (laughs) it's definitely happening after those videos. Those are crazy. Right. I mean, I get it, but geez, Louise. Right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we have such a fear tactic around babies and birth, and it's just like, stop. <laughs> totally. So let's talk about that a little bit, um, because as I was kind of, so my story real quick, won't bore you with the details, but let's back up about six years, and I kind of was on this page. I had no idea what evidence-based birth was. I wish I would have known you, but I was on this page, and I didn't take the Lamaze class, and I didn't do that, and I did my meditations, and darn it, I was going through it naturally and this is how it was going to be. Ended up being a train wreck, hence why I needed you. Um, (laughs) However, I would share, you know, oh, I'm four months pregnant, my baby's this big. And then women would come out of the woodwork, some that I already knew and loved and they've been in my life forever. And some who I had no idea who in the hell they were telling me all of these things about their experiences becoming a mother and they weren't the greatest story. Oh, it was we, awful. Sh- we, we have this tendency and I don't know why, but we want to share all of these horrible stories. And I get it. You know, it's like, we all love to complain. It's like my kids didn't sleep at all last night, which is really the truth. But you know, it's like, we, we, we want to share all these horrible things, but we never want to share the good things. Like we feel like we're like going to offend somebody. It's like, I'm like, Hey, I had a four hour home birth. That's what yes. my story was. Like, that's a win. And yeah. I'm not telling you four hours is good because you have to do all that work that a lot of people do in longer in four hours. So it's intense, but you know, it's like that was, that's my story. So I should feel confident and I should feel comfortable in sharing it because that was what was right for me and my family and my baby. Um, and so why we like, we feel like we're going to offend somebody or like hurt somebody's feelings. And it's like, we should be shouting these good stories. It's like from the rooftops. We should, we, that's what we should be doing. We shouldn't be hiding them. I totally agree with you. Why are we not sharing the positivity about birthing and becoming a mom and all of that versus sharing the negativity? And I, and I understand totally what you're saying about that. But I think that as a mom going through this, it's important to know that you're going to get that communication. So maybe Mm -hmm. having that filter and just saying that, or, or maybe even, you know, asking, Hey, you know what? I'm leaning more toward this. Can we not talk about that? I'd like to hear about your more positive experiences or something. And the funny thing is, is that when we focus on the good in ourselves, like we, we put that out into the world and then we draw it back in. Yeah. So if you're putting that out there, like you're telling everybody and their mom, it's like, 
my goal is to have a vaginal birth or whatever your goal is. You know, it's like you want to focus on the positive. So whatever your positive goal is, and I'm doing A, B, and C to do that. People are going to be like, oh, cool. Like, what do you, what else are you doing? Tell me more. And they're less likely to tell you their horror stories because you're putting that out there versus when we're putting out there, well, I'm just so scared. I just don't want a cesarean. Then they meet you with that same thing that you're putting out in the world. So they're meeting you back with that fear and they're like, well, let me tell you and let me pile on all these fearful stories. Right. So it's, you know, it's coming from both angles. If you're putting all the good out there, you're going to get the good back and you're going to get less of that that you know the all the horror stories so it's it, it comes from both directions it's like an energetic invitation yes. be careful what you're inviting yes <laughs> yeah it works for lots of things in life it does. especially birth. So, true. so true so okay so let's pretend we're back six years ago and i'm pregnant and i'm wanting you know i'm i'm on this page and i meet you and we think that this is going to be a wonderful relationship we should work together what does it look like with you next what's kind of the process you take your moms through yeah so we have um it's a six week class and we meet in person twice so our first and our last class are in person and then our middle four classes we meet via zoom which just like we are right now awesome. so and so it's great. So I can be at home and I don't have to spend three hours of my day packing up and going out somewhere and neither do you. So we're going to look, we're going to work at home and be on Zoom. Um, you're going to have, this is a flipped classroom. So it's kind of cool. So you'll have videos to watch before coming in, which you get to learn directly from Rebecca um, Decker, who's the, who's the founder of evidence-based birth, as well as some other, um, other instructors from around the country. And so you get to watch these videos at the time span that works for you. So if that means you're binge watching them like, you know, like their Netflix and you get all of them done at once, that's great. Or if you want to take, you know, a bit here and a bit there, you have all week and it's like, a, it's about an hour to an hour and a half of work. And then when we come together on the Zoom call, we make sure that all of that knowledge that you learned is applied to your situation. So that's why I'm here. So I know a lot about the birth community in the Valley. And so I can help you apply what you've learned on the videos to what your actual situation is and what you're looking at for a birth. Um, our in-person classes are really hands-on. So you're going to learn about stages of labor and stuff in a really different way. Like I'm not going to make you watch any kind of crazy videos. Um, oh, good. <laughs> yeah. So I, I know a lot of people have like this fear over like, I don't want to watch somebody else have a baby. Yeah. Which we have that option. You can choose to do that, but you don't have to. You don't have to watch it with a group of strangers. Um, and then in our last class, it's really hands-on. So we're going to take all these comfort measures that you've learned. We have a list of like 15 different ways that you can stay comfortable. And we're going to put them all into practice with this giant comfort or this giant labor rehearsal. So you're going to be able to use a birth ball and a rebozo and acupressure and all these kinds of things all in person and make sure that you understand what's, um, how to use them. And the other awesome thing is your partner is going to know how to do all of this too. So, and they're going to know all of your wishes and wants. So when you are, you can feel free to be off in labor land where most of us women need to be, especially towards the, the end. We just need to be in our own heads, off oh, in yeah. our own world. Yeah. But you know that someone's going to be there and they're going to be able to say like, oh no, she doesn't need that. She doesn't want that. She's laboring. Look at how great she's doing. We're just going to leave her alone, you know, or Good. stuff along those lines. So it's, um, it's an incredible class. Um, you have all of this evidence right at your fingertips. So um, Rebecca has, um, I believe, for at about 20 signature articles, which those articles are somewhere between 15 and 20 pages apiece. So if there's a topic that you want to dive into, you have all of this research that's right at your fingertips. You nice. Can stuff off, take it to your doctor and be like, hey, here's the research. So you're not going in like empty handed. Like you're like, hey, here's my stool to stand on. I feel confident in, in taking my wishes up with you. I love that because sometimes when we are feel like we're going up against experts and we don't have that in our corner, we can mm -hmm. kind of just, okay, whatever, right. you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And I feel for the OBs and you know, some of the, the midwifery practice out there, like they're busy, like they're meant to take call and then they have a full load of patients and then you know, God forbid they want to be with their family. So I understand at some point where it's like, maybe they're not up to date on the exact evidence that got released last week or, you know, last year. So it's like, right. if we can help them in a kind way, be like, Hey, well, Hey, this is what I found. 
Um, it's from your college. Can you help me understand how this plays into with my, um, with my, with my background? So, you know, you want that, that healthcare provider there to help guide the evidence, but mm -hmm. you've got that evidence to kind of stand on your own two feet. And I love that you described it in such a way that you're helping them basically help you. So mm -hmm. it's okay to bring information to people. You're right. I mean, we're all humans. We are all experts in our field, but you know, we're human. Right. Let's face it. Um, so I love that. I love clarity. I love the fierce conversations. That is really cool. And I'm sure that that goes a long way with your moms. Yeah. So that's what the six week kind of looks like. Do you have anything now that you'd like to share with the group that you have upcoming or any, any specials or anything? So um, right now we've got, I've got a super great pregnancy group for the Phoenix area that we're just starting out. So we really want it to be a place that's positive for moms where they can get evidence-based information, where they have a place to share. And I don't feel like we have that in the Phoenix area. We have a ton of mom groups. Obviously, we've got one really great one here. But we, <laughs> uh, right? Mom Nation, we love that one. But um, we, I want to focus on those, the, that pregnancy, that time period where moms are pregnant and right after, so that fourth trimester. So we're um, bellies, babies and bellies of Phoenix Metro. Um, Love it. You can find us. And um, what else? You can find out all of our class schedules. Um, we're, I'm at birthwithknowledge.net. Um, we have classes in Phoenix, Mesa, and Gilbert. Um, we have two more in June. We have one in Mesa on the, t on the 14th, um, and one in Phoenix on the 20th. Uh, so we're, I'm, I'm all over. You can find me, <laughs> you can find me pretty easy. Um, you can also find us, we've got a special coming up for the mom nation online market. Yay! Um, we will be there too. So look for us and, um, we got a special going on there. Cool. That's going to be so much fun. I'm glad that you got hooked up with Erin on that. She's such a cool Yes, I'm cool. really excited for it. Right? It's, it's a great concept too. So I'm excited for that to kick off. Well, Laura, thank you so, so much. You are amazing. And thank you for the support and the help that you are offering moms. Again, I can't stress enough how much I wish I had you because <laughs> you're exactly right. Pregnancy in that fourth trimester is just a different ball game. And when you're in it for the first time, it's, yeah, there's other mom's groups out there and yeah, there's other things you can tap into, but there's nothing like the support from somebody who like gets it and other people. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Like right, that time right. is just so, so crucial. It so, is. So thank is. you again. And, um, having me. Yeah, absolutely. It was super fun. I feel like, gosh, we've almost been going a half hour now. I feel like we could talk forever. <laughs> it's only my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, ladies, thanks again for watching. And uh, this is, again, Laura Fiala with Birth With Knowledge. And your video today is also sponsored by Team Evo AZ. Just letting you all know that the market is hot, hot, hot. And the interest rates just went lower. So it's even better. I know, right? Exciting stuff. <laughs> all right, guys. Bye. Bye.